First off is winning the LPL. And let's be honest, this is the most important tournament for any of our LPL players. Winning at home matters the most. And now, as we look towards the draft, I want to talk about Top Esports here because game number two, not going so hot for them. Do you feel like this was an issue of the draft and something that needs to change here? No, I think even once we got to mid game, once they found the advantages with the Fiora, with the Zoe, had they been able to play a more patient game, despite the fact that playing for that split push, playing for the side lane isn't as potent now, they got so much of an advantage early on, it felt like they should have been able to drive that home. I love how we just looked at the supports on our cameras there, and Yu Yanja looks like he's half asleep in his chair. We're in the grand finals of the LPL summer split, Ooh. and Yu Yanja is barely awake. We're into the draft, though, and a Nava. So it's a response to the Quinn, and it looks like TS are going to go for the Renekton first pick this time. So top esports playing around what JDG are drafting here, taking away the Gnar, which is something Zoom has played in the top lane in the past into that Renekton. And now JDG have to answer in kind. As 369, we talked about his Renekton is terrifying. Of course, and it's a champion that doesn't really have a lot of answers. I mean, two of its only answers are banned. The only other place you can think of looking is something like the GP, which obviously Zoom is very well known for. So we do see this Nidalee that has been such a huge priority in this series so far for Kanavi. And looking towards the AD carry roll, Loken gets this Ash once more. We could well have the same oh! bottom lane as before, but Kasa, he goes back to a comfort pick of old. He has 55 games of Gragas in his entire career, and he's won 45 of them. And pairing it with the AD soul laner as well. So you have a lot of good ganking options coming out from Karst. You can set up 369, you can set up Knight. And this is how TS has functioned all year long. And this is something that is very much out of the meta. We do not see Gragas in the LPL, but now the Volibear locked in as well. Something that fell very harshly out of the meta once it was nerfed. You just said, you know, champions that aren't in meta. Volibear really signifies that as well ever since the nerf he got on this patch. So we see him going back to comfort. It, it was his most played champion this split with 10 games. You have a bit of setup there for the Nidalee, but when we look at JDG, it's typically playing more around that bottom half of the map regardless. So now looking towards the bottom lane with these bans here, the Tom Kench taken away from you, Yanja, and Bard banned from Lumao in kind. And now we'll see if JDG do keep on focusing you, Yanja, with these bans, because this has been their strategy throughout the series. You know, the thing that I'm more, inter more interested in is seeing where Yagao goes with his mid laner, because we haven't seen anyone really counter pick into Lucian. Lucian is such a strong laner. I have seen some people in solo queue pick up the Jace into it and try to go for that 50 50 lane that is a bit more impacted by jungle. And you already have poke elements in your comp with the Nidalee, so that could be somewhere that he looks. So now, with an Ezreal band away from Jackie Love, they're saying, hey, go for the Jin. We would love to dive you, buddy. We would love to get underneath that tower. As Lumao hovering on this Leona, it's something that he's incredibly confident on. But importantly, they're taking these comfort picks away from you, Yanja. Nautilus still available. So is the Thresh, which, again, despite the loss, he had a pretty solid game on it last time around. Wow. And this is not something we see here in the LPL, but it fits their comp really well. When you have Senna in the bot lane playing around with the Dawning Shadows for your soul laners, is so great. And let's bear in mind, Jackie Love is used to playing on the weak side in this bottom side, so Senna certainly fits the composition and the style of top esports. However, this is not something we have seen out of Jackie Love this entire split. And now final pick is Yagao bringing the Zoe out himself. Which is really interesting because we've seen so many teams picking the Lucian into the Zoe, but after going head to head with it before and seeing how well Knight did in the lane, he has the confidence to pull it out himself. I love how every single time we see the poll on the bottom of the screen, it's just 80% to whoever won the previous game immediately. Fans sway the other side, but I have to say, this is a real interesting one coming out from Top Esports with Lucian in the mid lane for Knight. We've got Gragas in the jungle and then Jackie Love and Yu Yanja playing this exceptionally defensive bottom side. Yeah, their comp is going to be exciting to see because I expect it to do quite well early on. You have the Lucian, you have the Renekton, you have Gragas playing for you, you have the Senna support from the ultimate coming in at level six. But even the scaling shouldn't be too bad because the Senna's going to scale up quite nicely. You have a ton of sustain in there for your bruisers in the front line. And you have the Braum Shield to block all the poke. 
feels a little bit more like top esports are leaning into team fighting a little bit themselves as well but also with that global ultimate at a center while you can play weak side on the bottom on the bottom lane you can impact the rest of the map so if we do see these 1v1s or 369 and zoom if we see the junglers focusing on the top side the advantage could go to top esports and i'd love to see them accelerate the pace of the game not only for their champions and the illusion that are next in but also when you are playing against jdg who have a bit more of you know, this poke siege s composition coming out from the Nidalee and the Zoe wanting to play from a range. If this comp can't get in their first get division down and really lay down that siege, it can struggle. Well, we see Top Esports leaning on older comfort picks here with Yuyanja on his brawn with Kasa bringing out the Gragas in the jungle. But Kanavi sticking to what is strong right now and sticking to what he's been able to dominate on the past with this Nidalee pick. Two AP junglers in and our mid laners swapping picks. We're going to game three as Honor is on the line. You know, Lunchables, feels like the good old days with these Jayos back on the rip. It does. It Bring brings a smile to my face. It really does. It brings me back to watching last year and, you know, hearing the audience. It feels fantastic. But you know what? When we look at this game, like, so much is on the line here. And we came into this series saying it was the best players versus the best team. And so far in this series, that's been relatively true. But on the side of JDG, We've had some pretty pop-off performances, especially from Yagao on that Lucian last game looking amazing. Kanavi as well on this Nidalee. And speaking of pop-off plays from JDG, they're once again going for the level one invade. Zoom's Camille didn't look so bad either last game, and he wants to repeat this this time with a Volley Bear. They're onto the red buff. We could have a repeat of what we saw in game number one. Red buff resets here. The thing is, you're facing a Braum, and Braum is just so potent level one from being able to proc that passive on multiple oh, members. Top Esports want to make the counter play now. Lumao could be in trouble. Flashes over the Dragon Pit. What? And that flashes on towards Loken. This is a bit of a weird one. Knight with a very uncharacteristic misplay. I wonder if it's Oh my god, we're gonna keep going here. Kadavi and Yagao is still gonna keep pushing, putting their foot forward. Jackie Love went to farm, so JG have man advantage. Oh my goodness, how is this happening? In game number three, everything on the line, but JDG will not be stopped. We do have Jackie Love on a flank here, trying to pinch. The red buff is gonna reset once again. Top laners right now on an island, wondering what on earth is going on the bottom side of the map. We're wondering what on earth is going on <laughs> in the bottom side of the map. It looks like Kars is gonna go farm his Raptors and try to get that quick level two. Knight helping out with this one as well as Kanavi gets the red buff. Cars are gonna face check into this one. Knight is here, they wanna fight for themselves. Luma steps on forward, Yuyanja trying to get the slow onto Loken. He does still have his flash available, but he's stunned. Might get taken down, gets into the rest of his team. Lumao now stunned at the front line. Kasa trying to get away with his life. In goes Kanavi, but flashes over the wall as well. It's going to be first blood, going the way of the Zoe, but it's utter chaos, and it's going in the way of JDG. It's two minutes and 40 seconds, Watchables. Why do we have top lane TPs down at this moment? And you know what? Against the Braum as well, JDG still come out on top of the play. But both teams got pulled all over the place. We saw Jackie Love go to lane early on. Karsa gives up, tries to go to Raptors quickly, get that level two. And he, he feels like he has the confidence going, but we see Kanabi's level two as well. They collapse on them. Karsa is forced to flash because you have so much more burst coming out from the Nidalee and Zoe. Loken forced to flash pretty early on as well. Loken, Lumao, sorry, gets locked up, but Zoom TP's in for the support as well. We see Loken throwing out those volleys. Zoom just being the, the critical key member as well, having that man advantage. Yeah, and able to get back up to this top lane as the wave crashes. Look at the CS numbers in the top lane. He lost barely anything because of the pressure early on. Let's take a moment here while we have a second to look at the jungle because Kasa going with this Fred to Gragas that we know and love. Which we have seen a lot of people. Oh, 369 is in so much trouble as Zoom wants a solo kill for himself. Forced away though in the end. They didn't know where Kasa was. So we've seen a lot of people move away from the Predator ever since the changes because 
Talking to a lot of pros, they don't like the fact that you only now get the movement speed running towards the enemies. Hold that thought, Lyric, because we've got another fight on our hands. Yeah, I could be in trouble as the Flash comes in on towards Konami. 369 doing so much work, and in goes Knight to finish the kill. Now the Storm comes from the sky, and Knight might just go down. Yagao flashes out with his life. Zoom has to try and finish this one off, but Lumao has arrived on the play as well. They might be able to extend this one, but Lumao looks like he's just going to play keep away for now. Zoom slowed, though. Casa keeping him in the fight. 369 trying to follow up, but the Storm gives him a shield. Over the wall they go, Ruthless Predator, and another kill for Knight. And Knight eating over the wall aggressively, knowing he has the front line there, knowing he has the damage, and now we're three to three on the board. This is unreal, and Knight, importantly, has all three kills for the side of top esports. He has to be the carry that we all know him to be for his team. And now we see Yuyandra heading to this line that also reminds us the fact that, hey, you also not only have, you know, Braum with your ADK in the bot lane, you have Braum with Lucian on the same team. Lucian's so good at proccing those Braum passives with Lucian's own passive, so gonna do quite well in a lot of these skirmishes. And the beautiful thing is with that press, the attack as well, that fourth shot offers so much burst and there's so much available follow-up then to try and grab yourself a kill, try and grab yourself the play. And as we look across the map, Kanavi now, he wants to keep the action rolling. As he moves to this top lane, 369 doesn't have a flash. And realistically, he ain't getting out of this one. Does a bit of damage, but the dots are stacking up. And Zoom won't quite find the kill just yet. Kanavi's the one to finish it off. 369 expected Kanavi to go towards the bot side because, of course, we just had that skirmish in his top side jungle. His bottom side camp should be the one cut, cut once coming up, as we saw they did. 369 thought it was safe for him to push into turret, try to find that advantage over Zoom, ends up getting punished. So across the board here, we have an absolutely ridiculous start to this game. We could have another fight as Yanja proxies pox shield. We've more than one kill a minute. It's only been six minutes. Yeah, that's true. We've had an insane start to this one. I will say though, game number one, we had an insane first 10 minutes, and then we had a big old slowdown. So let's quickly talk about how these two teams want to play the mid game. For TS, it's just keep going towards that top half of the map, keep enabling the Lucian especially is what I want to see. As we see Karsa doing right now, you will have very potent ganks coming out from the E. Your flash should be up soon as well if you want to go. Karsa pops the Predator. He wants to make the play in the mid lane. Yagao going to be knocked up and should go down here. Another kill for Knight, who is popping off. If there's any player you want to set up on your team, it's Knight on this Lucian. I cannot wait to see what he's going to do in these mid-game fights when we get towards the Dragons. Because let's remember, both Top Esports and JDG have the highest Dragon and Baron control in the entire LPL. And sure, JDG might have bot side control, but you're facing a Senna Braum. <laughs> You <laughs> just try to 1v1 oh Kanavi. Jumps over. Blasco's going to be there. And he denies the correct jump. Now Root's going to come through. Kanavi has been found. And he's been taken down by Kasa. And we see you, Yanja, with the five head, 3,000 IQ flash. Looked a bit dicey going in. <laughs> Knew he could proc his passive. We see the Root coming out from Jackie Love. And another kill picked up in a bot lane that. We were just saying, sure, this is a bot lane that's going to get pressured, but it's so safe, Senabram. You have so much sustain. You have so many resistances between you. You're not going to be able to punish this bot lane. And it's so great to see Yu Yanja being this decisive player that can make things happen for his team. Because when you think about Yu Yanja at the very start of this year, when he was alongside Fotik in that bottom lane, there was a lot of questions being asked. He was being subbed between him and Chocho. Even when it came to spring finals, we saw Chocho playing in that series. Now Yu Yanja very much has earned his spot on this team and he's showing us why. We've criticized Yu Yanja very much, and I'd say deservedly so, honestly, but TS were so smart in building this roster with so many veterans and then saying, okay, we're gonna put in this new player who at least has the mechanics and can grow under the system. It was always gonna be Rocky to start with. It is he's a long-term, you know, project. It's a long-term investment from Top Esports. And you know, especially with Jackie Love in that bottom lane alongside him, if there's one person that can teach you how to play that lane, it's going to be Jackie Love right now. And we've seen that's why they have one of the highest CSD F15s. Actually, I think they do have the highest of any bot lane. Top Esports as a whole have the highest collective CSD F15 in the LPL. So this is a team that does really well in these laning phases. And that's the thing. We always talk about Top Esports as a team that kind of wants to win lane, win game. It's a similar story to what you'd expect from IG. Maybe not quite to the same extent, 
but it's all about these skirmishes once you've got some strength down the laning phase. And that's exactly what Knight has got this game. He's almost 20 CS up in that mid lane. He's already got himself a Cutlass. And it means that Carcer is happy to just waltz into the Rift Tower with no contested for Right, you have the Renekton, you have the Lucian. There's really no answer from the side of JDG. You, you have four kills on the Lucian anyway, so answering would be quite hard. Even if you tried to match a supporter AD carry roam, Senna already being level six would have the Dawning Shadows available to answer. But at least JDG are gonna be able to translate their bot lane priority into a Dragon, knowing that Carcer's go going to have to reset after that Rift Herald. And I love seeing the confidence from Loken as well to try and force for a plate in that bottom side, trying to trade with Jackie Love while he can, while Yu Yan just not in the lane. Kanavi going to be able to get this bottom side scuttle as well. But Loken has been an AD carry that, when you look at him last year, he was on top esports, and he was a player that received a lot of criticism when top esports didn't make it to the World Championship. Now he returned home to JDG, the team that he was on before top esports, and he has had a year beyond all years, the level of improvement out of this AD carry is honestly unprecedented. I feel like Loken is a victim of lasting impressions because even coming into spring or coming out of spring, a lot of people were like, ah, you know, he's just fine, he's just serviceable. But in spring, he felt like he had a really good split. And even more so in summer, when the rest of the team was collapsing, Lu Mao was playing horribly in those first two weeks. Zoom was having a tough time because he hadn't found new champions to acclimate to when teams started banning out the Orn. And Loken was that guy that can fall back on who was carrying in those team fights. And it feels like people need to adapt their perception of Loken to being, I'd say, the most consistent AD carry in LPL. And Loken had definitely found new champions because he was really enjoying Aphelios towards the start of this split. That has to be said. One of the better Aphelioses in the league at the time. But obviously, that competition was pretty intense. He was undefeated on Kalista in spring. I think that's, that's something true. a lot of people don't realize is this man's Kalista. My God, was it good. I think that's the crazy thing is you can talk about AD carries of completely different styles on both sides of this bottom lane and say, these guys are one of, if not the best in the world. 369 is in trouble as Zoom all ins, but it's actually 369 turning it around. Dornish Shadow oh. across the team, but Zoom misses the ulti. 369 all flashes away, grasp not quite enough. What a nice reaction coming from 369, yeah. but also well played from Zoom, who probably should have had that kill. 369 now gonna have to recall. Luckily enough, Zoom's backing off, so 369 actually gonna be able to walk up and catch that wave and get a bit more experience, but you'd expect him to have to blow this TP to get back to lane. And let's just bear in mind the item advantage that oh, Zoom God. had going into that play. Uh-oh. Kanavi is not going to let 369 go back to base. I think 369 knows that he is doomed in this one. Zoom's going to push the wave. The spears go in. Ludens hits. And now Zoom gets to walk underneath the tower. The stun goes down. It's answered with a stun from 369. But, I mean, what could you do there? Nope. Knight's going to come catch the wave. But at least TS do have the Rift Herald. So they're going to put that down in bot side. Look at some plate gold onto Jackie This is what you can do there. You can answer on the other side of the map. That's exactly what Top Esports will do. Find themselves a whole boatload of gold. Standard League of Legends is much more. One team makes a play on one side. You go the opposite way. It makes a whole lot of sense, right? But in the meantime, importantly, the one side of the map that hasn't been answered in is this mid lane. Yagao gets to push that in because Knight had to answer in the top side. The great thing, though, is obviously Knight didn't miss it on any side. CS or EXP since he did go top, and he is sitting with about a 20 CS lead. And I mean, already has the Blade of the Root King finish, so if he ever gets on top of Yagao, he's gonna have to definitely burn yeah. that flash, or I guess in this instance would be able to use those heals. Yes, yeah, Double Seek heal. Seeker's Arm Guard is not gonna help you. Not no. against the Blade of the Root King. You cannot survive the burst that Knight has to offer right now. And not to mention, with a cleanse on this Lucian, it's not like your Gao can answer in a 1v1. TP coming on through to deny the recalls from JDG. Loken dodges the ult though, and a stun chain comes out onto 369. Loken surviving for now. He will be get stunned himself. They've turned it around onto 369. They can't quite finish the kill though. The heal comes from Jackie Love, and now the turnaround from Top Esports. They're trying to get on, but the root doesn't quite land. Knight is here. He's on the play. He has the damage, the culling, blocked by Kanavi. And JDG somehow get away with it. I mean, JDG are the ones who end up with the kill when TS are the ones all collapsing but feels like we had some execution errors i didn't see how Carson's ult got used but we'll definitely it was i assume we're gonna get a replay of that right one. at the start of the play he just missed it on yeah slow. i mean you're gonna commit e flash anyway so unfortunate play here for top esports they are still gonna get themselves a tower off the back of that rift tower jackie love getting in a huge chunk of gold off the back of that one already has his mana moon but importantly in the mid lane and in the top side of the map jdg are answering for this 
very one-sided play. And JG, like Zoom and Yagao are not only getting play gold, not only getting minion gold. Oh, hang on, 369's in trouble. This turret no longer exists oh. as Yagao moves in as well. Should be able to find a bubble, but the turret is back and Zoom's taking damage. Never mind, Yagao's got this one. Yagao only hit his passive. He missed Sleepy Travel Bubble, he, he missed one Battle last Star. Battle Star. One last one at the end, I think. Well. It happens. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, I was feeling a little nervous for them, but the burst came through at the last second. Yagao is going to finish this tower off. A lot of gold going into his pocket. And going back, I was only saying that, sure, they got they got minions, they got plate gold, but TS were also sharing all the EXP and losing out on farm on the bottom side of the map, so you are gaining so much more than even what it appeared to be. So we're at 5 to 7 on the scoreboard right now, but gold is just about even as this Drake will be taken by top esports. And when we look across the scoreboard, honestly, it is almost exactly even. We've got even gold, we've got even dragons, we've got even towers. All three games have been like this, to where, sure, maybe one team will be up 1 or 2k in 15 minutes, but then 10 minutes later, it'll flip the reverse way. Well, Top Esports want to flip it right now in their favor. Root will come through onto Lumao, but no massive follow-up available. Trouble bubble, though, actually, onto Yuyanja. He's going to be fine. He's on parole. One thing to note about TS's comp that, you know, we can see now in their formation is they do have a very strong 1-3-1 one, one in the sense that, you know, we see there's just going for the Blade of the Rune King. Lucian extremely strong right now, and Zoe can't match him in sides. So TS will be able to consistently look for side lane pressure as they did, and then move to the objective first like they did here. And importantly, Zoom's TP is not quite off of cooldown just yet. So no way for JDG to contest this rip Herald. This will be both Heralds going the way of top esports in this game. But Zoom has had so much time to himself on the side lanes. Look at the level difference between our top lane and Zoom is 11. Whereas on the other side, 369 is only level 9. Ooh, hang on. Zoe We've got a in. nice paddle star onto Jackie. Look, just about dodges away from the stun. As Lumao goes in, Yu Yanja has a stopwatch to keep himself safe. Culling not going to do a whole heap for much. As Lumao barely walks away with his life. Now onto Jackie. Look, they go. And Loken. Oh, in fact, Zoom going to be the one to grab the kill. Lumao still got out of the play. It's a mid lane tower for a bot lane AD carry. And they answer, but at the same time, Zoom also had to commit his TP to this play. So 369 is getting a bit of free time up towards the top side, trying to catch up in that EXP department. And Lyric, this is where top esports are meant to shine. Knight is unbelievably fed. These fights around mid lane is meant to be what they are excelling at. This is where the individual players can shine. We did see that turn into a 5v4, though, with the fact that Zoom did TP in. Also, the CC setup coming from JDG was very nice, as you pointed out. Nice lockdown coming in from Loken and setting up for Lumao. I feel like, I feel like TS, their comp again, relies a lot more on both of their laners defaulting the side lanes, pushing those out, moving first, and trying to get that man advantage. I've not been able to find it so far in this game. Even, just... in, even in that last one, I'm sorry. It was just very awkward because they were pushed into the enemy side of Summoner's Rift as well. That's true. But their goal is that both sides are their side of Summoner's Rift. So maybe next time around, true. they just win the fight on the enemy side. 369 going to be starting these crooks off, but Kanavi's not having any of it. Dominus immediately popped. And this is a fight that Renekton wins very easily, especially with Jackie Love's help. Yeah, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Kanavi uh, you know, jumps in, says hello to 369. We have globals. Says goodbye to 369. Yeah, I'll say we have globals on the side of Top Esports, so you are never by yourself. Jackie Love is always in their hearts. Jackie Love is omnipresent in this game. Assuming his ult is available, 369 happy to get himself an assist because he's fallen pretty far behind when it comes to the top lane. Yeah, he's at least finally been able to pick up that Blade of the Rune King, so it's going to start bearing a bit better to where Zoom's trying to get on Triforce isn't exactly there yet, but does have a bunch of armor, especially with that Thornmail, so those traits not exactly going to go with 369's way yet. Not just yet. Zoom, and I mentioned the level lead earlier. Zoom has maintained that two-level lead for himself, and a similar story in our jungle as well. Kanavi, level 11 to Kars' level 9 right now. JDG starts to group up because Dragon's coming up in a minute and a half. And looking at it, they are just going to be able to force through mid right now. Loken is pushing that wave. They should be able to secure vision. As you said, every game, right? JDG have consistently defaulted to this Ash, which just brings so much utility in that Hawk shot. And now we're going to see that because they had the map set up first, they pushed out those side waves. 369 is going to have to go topside to answer.
Knight is moving to the bottom half of the map here. As you rightly said, 369 going to be pushing out in the top lane. Zoom has to respect the strength that Knight has, because even if he's tanky, with Blade of the Rune King as the first item, this Lucian can do work against tanks. He's even almost at an S3 versus almost hitting that two item. Spike has all the mobility, and ever since the... Uh the movement speed nerfs on the Q. Getting onto a mobile champion like Lucian is just so difficult. And it's important to see that Knight has just recalled, does grab that Essence Reaver that you just alluded to, Lyric, and now can get back onto the map just before this dragon spawns. This feels to me that both teams want to fight for the Drake. And the thing we need to keep our eye on is that ward in mid lane that top esports have. If 369 can find a good flank there or in the control ward bot side, that is an avenue to them winning a fight. It's a lot of poke damage coming out from JDG before the fight truly begins. Arrow goes in, Yuyanja cleanses it. And they'll back away from the play in the end. 369, he's, he's, he's pretty sure he's still playing Fiora at this point as he stays up to the top side. Play to the Rune King means he can split push a bit onto the mid lane tower because it's not gonna be able to fire with a Volibear in the play. Dawning Shadow doesn't do a whole lot of much and Cast is stunned up, but he has a stopwatch to keep himself safe for now. Loken free firing in the meantime, but he's slowed by the barrel and now they can collapse onto the AD carry. 369 from the backside and he oh jumps into the play! 369 is only rolling nines today. And who says B1 Renekton's a sin? Throw away your Bible because 369's here to stay. 369 again going back to that TP ward that we talked about finding a great flank. The rest of TSO buying time. Nice play from Uyanja. Great stopwatch coming in from Karsa as well. Now leading to this 20 minute Baron for TS. And isn't this just a signature play from Top Esports? 20 minute Baron and Top Esports are synonymous. JDG, they're just gonna have to settle for an Infernal Drake because there's no way they can contest right now. You know, this is the scary thing about watching LPL compared to when I watch other leagues is that teams are just so willing to pull the trigger on plays like this, whether they're good or bad, right? A lot of times <laughs> they don't work out, but it's that decisiveness that, that just makes you question yourself of like, okay, uh, what are they doing? They have the confidence to do this. Can we actually fight them? It's a it's a skill check region I've heard it called in the past. Yeah. Let's take another look, because Loken, I think, just stepped way too far. And we saw Karsa buy time with that stopwatch. TP came in from 369, flashing that in. Route. Nice root, like you're saying, coming out from Jackie Love and just secured two kills, forcing away the other three members. Jackie Love always bold, flashing in to pick up that last kill. 369 with a beautiful flank, and that kind of answers all of the deficit that he previously had in that top side as well. Those two extra kills has removed any kind of lead that Zoom had for himself. Importantly mentioned though, Zoom does now have his Triforce, so he's, you can't underestimate the damage that Zoom's gonna be able to do. Now I wanna see what map setup TS go with. We were talking a lot about the 131 early on, but I'd actually like to see them transition into a 4-1, just have Knight push out like he just did, and play a two-lane setup for the fact that you don't want to give JDG a very easy way to engage on your three-man core. The Colonel feels exactly about this series the same way that I feel about this series. I have no idea who's going to win this one. It's so damn close. The towers are almost even. The gold, though, is now in top esports favor. But when you look towards the later stages of the game, JDG pretty much have their standard composition. And it's, it's great, right? There's always going to be able to burst out so many targets on the side of TS. You have the consistent DPS coming out from the Ash. You have a very viable frontline coming in as well. This time, it's a lot more like we talked about JDG Game 1, where TS's comp is all about this burst coming out from the Lucian Renekton. A lot of bursts coming out from Yagao there, but Yuyanja definitely the guy that is happy to tank it up on the side of top esports. So Zoom moves back towards his bottom side of the map. And this map set up the 1-4 is what I was just talking about, what we saw, where JDG are continuously going to look to overload one lane and force the 5v4. Yeah, top esports are looking to find a pick, though. JDG really could respect not to go anywhere close to that half of the map. They understand this top tower is fourth. Yep, so TS still going to use their pressure quite well and at least manage to pick up an objective. It is, at least thus far, a 2,000 gold sweep coming from this Baron. Good answer from JDG, though, to find a tower elsewhere on the map. It is a tier 2 for a tier 1, so certainly not an even trade, but a trade nonetheless. At least something comes out from JDG. And it's actually not easy for TS's comp to really push forward into the base, because despite having double AD carry, it's quite low range when you have a Lucian. Not to mention, 
when the composition out of JDG pulls the trigger, they pull it hard with an Ash Arrow coming on through. If a Trouble Bubble lands, there is a lot of ways to just annihilate anyone on the front line. And the wave player is quite decent as well with Zoe having that looting with the Runans being picked up for Loken as well. So we are tier two taken by the side of top esports. So that would be the last thing they get to do with the Baron Buff. It's now timed out and we reset to a neutral state. But importantly, that gold lead has extended a little bit more, 4,000 now in favor of top. And now we are keeping our eyes on the next Dragon, which will be up in a minute and 40 seconds. So it's gonna be about getting those resets down, trying to secure that bottom side vision. And JDG are back on the map first. You would expect them to be able to get it down. We already see uh, Kanavi heading in. Now my question is, can we see TS find those same flank angles coming in? Kanavi really wants that red buff, but he might sacrifice his own life for it. Might have to flash. He can jump over the wall oh. here, calling over though. Kanavi barely gets away, but no, he's shut down by night. It's twice. We saw him do this with Krugs earlier as well. Kanavi just wants too much. And now this should forfeit complete control of bot side to TS. And I love that Knight is willing to flash over to make that play happen as well. He knows how important shutting down the jungler is, especially with Dragon spawning in 50 seconds. And this has just been one of Kanavi's bad habits. Remember, he actually even did it against LGD where uh, yep. Zoom solo killed, I think, Shie when he was on the Orn. And then he goes and tries to get a Kindred Mark on top side instead of taking the free Dragon. So. This is a very Kanavi-esque mistake. Kanavi is the kind of player that will carry your game, but sometimes he tries to carry a little bit too hard, can step a little over force, and uh, ends up losing out. This is one of those examples, and now Knight has complete control of this bottom side jungle. It's going to be difficult for Kanavi even to check in and get close to this dragon. The great thing is they do have a lot of ways to check brushes coming out from the Nidalee, coming out from the Zoe as well. So it shouldn't be too big of a deal, but they definitely need zoom there. Knight right now is just having free time with this bot lane tier two. He's got down half of the tower's health already because JDG had to worry themselves so much with just trying to find any level of control in the mid lane. Now the rotation on towards the Dragon. Cast has already started this one off. There's no way whatsoever that JDG can make their way in before Dragon goes down. Might look for a fight after the play, though. Yu Yanja here to block any follow-up damage on 369. Knock-up goes on to Yagao. Looks like JDG's still going for this one. Lumao doesn't quite connect the Zenith Blade, and that means top esports, they get the Dragon, they get out of it. Two Dragons apiece right now, but still a 5k gold lead on the side of top esports. Baron is going to come up soon, so once again, the resets are going to come out. It's about trying to get that vision for a nice Baron fight. So I've just noticed an item coming on through here. Knight is now on the three item illusion, and that is a terrible, terrifying concept right here because that Infinity Edge means he is going to hit like a truck, and when the double shot crits, your health bar's gone. That's the thing is, a lot of people might be looking at this and thinking, okay, Knight is an AD carry, but <laughs> mid lane Lucian, Lucian in general kind of functions a lot more as a burst mage in my yeah. mind, where you get that one combo off, and health bars go from 100 to zero real fast. He's like a melee Zoe, honestly, at this point. Is, uh, I think Loken actually managed to get that red buff somehow. Now they move away as they have completely lost control of the jungle at this point. Zoom's going to recall because he knows he needs to get back to his team. Kanavi fighting really hard for vision in his jungle here. Spear's going to come out. Yuyansha happy to tank it up. And we see Zoom is looking for a flank angle. He was sitting in base, waiting for a place to TP. We, they see that TS don't give it to him, so he now starts to come out. But we saw in that exchange that TS's comp is just so good. Oh my goodness, oh. Kanavi's gone too far once again. Knight can't finish off the kill with the culling. But Kanavi, man, you got to be careful. That's his flash down with Baron available. Top Esports, this is what they do. Exactly. Like, if, if Top Esports get an inch, they're going to try and take it a mile. JDG forced into a pretty dicey situation. It was all a bait. They want the fight. Root comes down onto Lumao. Can they find any more damage onto you, Yancha, though? And that's Dawning Shadow Burnt. A lot used now. As Zoom tries to find a play onto this Renekton. Flashes away from the stun. Will survive with his life. So, oh, he wants oh. to re-engage, but Zoom has to all out. Both teams being forced back, and you know, I was gonna say, I, I guess it was actually a bait from Kanavi, knowing, hey, I'll go low. Top Esports will go to Baron. We'll force them into us, but. I'll be able to flash away from Knight, who's alone in the jungle. Yes. <laughs> he read them like hey, a book. Spring hey, MV yeah. spring yeah. MVP, man. Believe. I mean, he was the spring MVP. I don't know if that, <laughs> 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 yeah. Maybe not. Maybe, Maybe not. that wasn't all mind games. He's shut down now, and without Nidalee on the map, Top Esports, they have free reign of this Baron, but Yagao 
wants to put some pressure on. JDG not going to go down without a fight. Lumao denied the Zenith Blade. That was beautiful from Yuyanja. And now they're going to chase down onto Lumao. I don't think he can get away, but flashes out with his life. And Loken slowed by Jackie. Love the flash forward. AD carry on, AD carry. And Yuyanja grabs the kill. Top Esports, they can do this all day. And great job by Jackie Love to set that up. Looks like they're actually going to default to Baron once again, try and set up. It is a 3v5 right now. It certainly is, but Yagao not going to let this one go without contesting whatsoever. Moves on in. Kanavi's about to respawn. This is where a Zoe thrives, being able to fight over this terrain. A bit more damage coming out, but the sustain from Jackie Love has kept them so damn healthy. Baron goes down, and Jackie Love wants to force a fight off the back of everything here. The slow, the trouble bubble should mean they can disengage as Yagao steals a flash to get out of it. And Top Esports get them what they want. They get the Baron, and you know, I, I feel a bit bad because right as I praise Kanavi, he goes down. Yeah. So that's some like classic caster curse in action. But Dragon coming up in a minute and 30 seconds. TS will now definitely be able to guarantee Pryo to try and secure that objective. Lucky for both sides, we are not on Soul Point. And let's just quickly revisit the items on the scoreboard right here because when we look at the fact that JDG are trying to contest Top Esports 5v5, the mid lane is a full item ahead. In fact, let's take a moment here. I'm watching slow motion as Kanavi gets dunked. Hey, that was some clutch experience. Karsa coming in. They set up for the turn. We see Yuanja come out with the ultimate. Jackie Love following up with the root. Zoom able to get away, though. We see a few Brom Q's miss, and this is where I thought, okay, JDG should be able to get away. But then we see Jackie Love flashing forward for that slow Yuanja going in as well to top it off. We've got another fight on our hands here. Yuanja steps forward to try and get the marks onto Zoom. Gonna see the solar flare, but in goes the Renekton, gets a stun down and a Dawning Shadow to finish it off. Knight wants some more kills for himself, the culling to finish off a double kill and top esports. This is their map! Why is Loki topside, Munchables? Why is Loki split pushing to a tier two topside? Uh, you're the analyst, not me. I don't have an answer for your lyric, but top <laughs> esports, they don't care. They, They're pushing in. Yeah, they can just end. They have Baron minions, two people Loki are down. Is We've got a base race cam because Loken looked like he was going to try and race, but <laughs> get home! The game's about to end, Top Esports. Now on to the Nexus. JDG, they're meant to be the smartest team in the LPL. That is not what we are seeing here in game number three. Top Esports, though, there is an answer from JDG, and they might just have to back off. They still do have a numbers advantage. They have two cannons with Baron. Oh, that's Ooh. a trouble bubble on to Jackie. Love the redemption coming on through as well. Has to cleanse. Yu Yanjin now stunned. Luma forced out of the play, rooted, but will keep his life here. Jackie looking to shroud everyone as they escape, but the TP, here we go. Zoom looking for the flank as JDG, they try and make a turnaround play to win themselves this game. Top Esports, they don't know what's going on just yet. They're going to re-engage onto Lumao. He's got himself a stone plate, but he's just not tanky enough. Goes down, but he's straight up Jackie Love. Now Loken trying to dish out the damage. Knight goes into the back line and absolutely bursts them down. But Yagao answers. It's Yu Yanja now on the play. Yagao versus the world. As we see Doom just buying time for his mid laner. The damage coming on through. 369 Yu Yanja so damn low. And Yagao gets the kill. And Knight almost did it. He got onto the back line. He dished the damage out. But when you flash into a Zoe, you're going to get bursted out yourself. Really clutch TP flank coming out from Zoom to secure this dragon. The Zoom flank is beautiful. The team fighting from JDG is what we always praise them for. Jackie Love caught out. Knight tried his damnedest to win the fight. But it's JDG who take it. But minions doing their best. <laughs> you mean minions? Yes, to secure TS the base. Looks like they potentially might even get this next Nexus turret. It's okay. The cavalry has arrived. Let's take another look at this beautiful flight. Yeah, so we see Lumao is going to go in aggressively right here. And the members of TS are trying to fight back. Karsa with a terrible ultimate. Knight goes into so much damage to the back line. Goes forward, gets bursted out immediately as well. We see that Zoom is doing such a great job of zoning the rest of the members from Yagao. Yagao comes in with a great paddle star as well. And now 369 and Karsa just had no way of closing the distance. So JDG are able to finish off these kills. I love how Yagao gets a, a kill at the end with a stolen smite that came on through. Let's take another look from Zoom's perspective. Yeah, does go in already using his full combo. His ultimate still not up yet. Is going to come up just about now. Fishing out all that damage onto Yuyanja. Goes forward, throws out that beautiful ultimate, giving it out all the room to throw out these paddle stars, and just keeps going forward to dish out all the damage. He's just invincible in these fights. When Jackie Love isn't there to do the damage, and speaking of Jackie Love, 365, that's how early in the fight he got taken down. 
But just look at that. Knight did all of that damage pretty much in one burst. That was Yagao throughout an entire team fight. Still went down second. Here we go. Play onto Dracula once more. He has himself a stopwatch and Lumao's in trouble. In the meantime, Locus just annihilated by 369. This Renekton paying dividends as Knight goes underneath the tower. The culling to take down one. Looks for a second, but can't find it. Zoom now. Forced off the back of the play. Knight down to 1 HP. The spear won't quite land though. 369 with the second one of the five. And this is why we say TS have some of the best players in the LPL because any of them can step up in a moment like 369 just did. Like Knight did as well, getting under the tower. We talk about Knight as one of the best, if not the best mid laner in the world. 11, 2, and 1 on this Lucian. He tried in the fight but this time around he gets it and we're going to four games here because top esports are now two and one and in classic top style they're killing on the fountain but they want this series for themselves and now jd you're gonna have some questions to answer because sure we've seen in spring when their backs against the wall they can handle the pressure they have the coaching staff they have the bond the camaraderie to do so but Summer Finals is a completely different beast. A lot of players view Summer so much more prestigious as Spring. It really is the, the true crowning of that year, of the legacy. And now, with TS being on match point, right, this is where the, the nerves really come into play. And when you look at the two teams, JDG, they won in Spring. If they could win Summer here, it would be back-to-back -back championships. But for the side of top esports, this would be their first ever title. <laughs> The gold grab very much in favor. Knight just about top of the damage, but it was close. I love the battle of the mid laners yeah. in this series. And once again, going back to these guys are longtime friends. They are from the same hometown. They used to play on the same PC Cafe team. Like, these two know each other very well. They go to Hotbot all the time, and now they're going head-to-head -head in the mid lane. Knight just about winning it out, but it was damn close between our guys. I kind of... I'm sad that we didn't get to see the setup for that final fight that Top Esports managed to get to win the game out in the end. But I have to say as well, I want to quickly mention Zoom. Even though he loses this game, showing us that this Volley Bear pick, it is not nerfed to Oblivion. This is still totally viable. Well, and we, we saw two different things on the Rift. We saw Zoom showing us how, despite a champion being nerfed and perceived as bad, how it can still be useful. And then Karsa on the op.